So we just talked about how water is a universal solvent and it can dissolve a lot of solutes, right? And well, in fact, it is true that, that water is the solvent in our bodies too. So there are solutes that are dissolved in our, in our body, and when these solutes are dissolved in our blood, for example, they are called electrolytes. And our electrolytes are very important for the function. And electrolytes are, and electrolytes are very important for the proper functions of cells and organs in our body. For example, some of the electrolytes in our body are sodium, potassium chloride, and bicarbonate. And we can measure this in your blood. And so when you exercise, for example, you exude a lot of these, uh, you release a lot of these electrolytes to replenish ourselves. We have to then uh, maybe consume food with these salts or consume uh, a drink with these salts in them to replenish our electrolytes. And when we talk about electrolytes in solutions, we can describe them in three categories. One is that they are a strong electrolyte. Two is that they are a weak electrolyte. And three is they are not electrolyte at all, called non-electrolytes. So let's first talk about the strong electrolytes. What is a strong electrolyte? In the previous uh, case, we saw that sodium chloride or a salt ionic compound can dissolve in water completely, right? So if we were to write the chemical equation for that, we start with sodium chloride solid, state of S solid, dissolves in water liquid, becomes an, an a, a cation, sodium plus positive, Aqueous. Remember that this now is solvated, surrounded by that water molecule, so that's why we call it aqueous and not a solid. But it's not really a liquid, it's just a, a solid surrounded by water, that's aqueous. And then also chloride, chloride negative anion is also surrounded by water. So whenever you have an ionic compound that when it goes into water, it, dissol it dissolves completely, 100%, it's no longer sodium and chloride. As a, as a compound, but sodium ions and chloride ions floating around. <clears throat> we call that a strong electrolyte because of the 100% dissociation into ions. Okay? And well, it turns out it has a secondary effect. When you are dissociated completely like that, you can carry an electric current. You can conduct electricity. So what does that mean? Let's say that you had an electric current uh, outlet, connect, and then you have a light bulb, and they are not connected. The wires are not connected. But if you dip those two wires into a solution of NaCl, now the NaCl, even though those wires are not connected, but they are both touching the water and NaCl, it will carry that current. Now, this does actually happen if you just have water in there. So, for example, one of the... Um, Warnings you see in your uh, uh, when you're using a, ha a hair dryer is that you do not want to use it and drop it in the water, right? Because it will carry the current and it will electrocute you and you will die. But in fact, if you are using pure water, it would it would be completely safe because pure water cannot conduct electricity. If that current, if that electric current goes through the water, it it cannot travel through the water. There's nothing that can carry it. Now, if that water has solutes in it that are positive and negatively charged, it can now carry the current in that water and then, you, and then electric, electric current will go through and then you will be electrocuted. So why is it then would that uh, warning label be there? Turns out the water that we use at home is not 100% pure water. It has salts in it. It has uh, maybe sodium chloride. It may, probably not. It has other things like calcium ions, other ions in it that can carry the uh, current. So what about a weak electrolyte? What is a weak electrolyte? A weak electrolyte, by definition, is an electrolyte that conducts electricity uh, partially or weakly. Okay, so what happens is when you have a molecule, and you may not recognize them right now, but weak acids will give you weak electrolytes. And I'll tell a little bit uh, about what weak acids are in the next chapter. But for now, if I tell you it's a weak acid, it's going to be a weak electrolyte. And what does that mean? So, for example, HF is a weak acid. When you dissolve it into water, into liquid water, it will dissolve into H plus and F minus. But, be but because it is a weak acid, it doesn't like to stay dissolved like that. And some of, some of it, actually most of it, go back to become the molecule. 
H and F will recombine to form HF the molecule. So there will be some H pluses and some F minuses and a lot of HF. Because of this, there are some ions in the solution, so it will conduct electricity, but not greatly. It will, have, it will instead of having a bright light, when you uh, conduct a light bulb, it will have a dimmer light. And lastly, we have non-electrolytes. Non-electrolytes are molecules that when you dissolve in water, do not form any ions. A prime example is sugar. Sugar is a molecule, solid. When you dissolve in water, it does dissolve, it may dissolve completely, but it dissolves as intact whole molecules. So do not, it doesn't break apart and form any ions. Because it, it is dissolved completely, we still say it's aqueous, but there are no charges, right? Because there are no charges, it doesn't carry any electric current. So if you were to connect this into with a light bulb, it will be lights out. Okay, finally, checkpoint. Which of the following aqueous solutions will be a strong electrolyte? KOH in water, ammonia in water, ethanol in water, or sugar in water. Remember to decide whether something is a strong electrolyte or not, it has to be able to dissolve completely. So let's go down the list. KOH, that's ionic, right? K, cation, OH, polyatomic anion. So will a ionic compound dissolve in water? For now, we say, yes, it will dissolve in water completely. So that might be our answer. B, NH3 in water. Is this an ionic compound? This is a molecular compound. Even though it dissolves in water, it dissolves wholly as a molecule, right? So this one probably will not be your strong electrolyte. Now, later you will learn that this actually does dissolve into water, into ionic uh, species, but very weakly because it is a weak base. We'll learn about that. But for now, we should recognize that it's not ionic, so it's not going to be a strong electrolyte. Ethanol. Again, ethanol is a whole molecule, C2H5OH. It is not ionic compound, so it's not going to dissociate completely. So it's not going to be a strong electrolyte. And sugar, we just found out, we did that as an example, will not uh, it's a molecule, so it will not dissociate into ions. So our only ones that will dissociate into ion completely is KOH, so your answer should be A. And now let's talk about this unit called the equivalent. The equivalent is a unit used in the health fields quite frequently. So what is an equivalent? The equivalent is the amount of an ion that provides one mole of charge. What does that mean? So for example, if I have one mole of sodium, because sodium is positive one charge, one equivalent is equal to one mole of sodium, right? Because one mole of sodium will give you one mole of charge. Now for example though, if I say I have one mole of calcium 2 plus, how many equivalents is that? One mole calcium for each mole of the calcium, there are two charges each, right? Because calcium is a 2 plus, so this would be that it is equal to two equivalents. Okay? It's equal to having twice the amount of sodium. Is that how you want to think about that? So for, again, if I had 0 0.5 mole of calcium 2 plus, how many equivalents is that? Since one mole gives me two equivalents, half a mole will give me one equivalent, right? So let's do this. And um, and The question states, the laboratory tests for a patient include a blood calcium level of 8.8 .8 milliequivalents per liter. How many moles of calcium ion are in 0 0.50 liters of blood? So that's my starting point now. I know that you have, I know that we have 0.5 liters of solution of blood. And the 8.8 .8 milliequivalents per liter, that's a conversion factor. So I say that for every one liter of solution of blood, I have 8.8 .8 milliequivalents. Remember, we need to go to how many moles of calcium, right? So right now we have liters canceling out, we have milliequivalents. Now, milliequivalents is not equivalent, so let's, let's convert it into uh, equivalents. 
What's the relationship between milliequivalence and equivalence? 1,000 milliequivalence is equal to 1 equivalence. Alright, so those cancel out. Lastly, what's the relationship between equivalence and moles of calcium? What did we just say? We said that in 1 mole of calcium 2 plus, there are 2 equivalents. Alright, so equivalents and equivalents cancel out. You take 0.5 times 8.8 .8, divided by 1,000 divided by 2. You should get 0 0.022 moles of calcium 2 plus.